好。请收看《大宝法王慈悲开示》。나다나쇼베쉬브는신나가르다치류차리아다도공치류차리아다네미안해다겸주기돈버지아다당부채디제리아난겸주랍세단제외토네하시지마쉬아면도섬정도 As I mentioned this morning,、uh, I will be conferring the vow of refuge this afternoon, and after doing so, would like to talk to you a little bit about the training associated with the refuge vow. The first thing I would like to talk about is the difference between going for refuge, per se, and taking the vow of refuge. To begin with, we need to explore whether or not there is a difference between these two things, and if so, what that difference is. The thing that I'm going to talk about is the difference between going for refuge and taking the vow of refuge. The thing that I'm going to talk about is the difference between going for refuge and taking the vow of refuge. 我俩大姐，嗯，面对吧，给，你最多穷不一米呢？俺那姐，阿妹给明年不要了，阿妈阿妈是来了去。那天他，讲不住，讲不住，不记得，不记差点了。他看到，嗯，我是什么路的？找米地
Yanji Soksa Kashi Chungdu Neda Gibi Gitsawe Jelia Rangutune Rubeg sort of the Mangu on the other the Kashi on the other Manguji and a Pamegi Chamzilla Dene Chokwan Chadi on the way we usually go for refuge it does not require receiving the vow uh, during a vow ceremony. In a sense, whenever we feel uh, in danger, we go for refuge to someone or something. For example, whenever a child experiences something unpleasant, they're liable to call out mommy. And that call for their mother is a type of going uh, for refuge. Some species uh, can survive independently immediately after birth, such as turtles. But then there are other species, like our own, that cannot survive without their parents for some time. Tuzi for example, when in response to an immediate danger, we exclaim, Three jewels, regard me with your compassion, asking for their intercession in an immediate or temporary matter. That type of going for refuge does not require that one have taken the vow of refuge and therefore does not require that one uh, maintains the commitments of that vow. In contrast, the vow of refuge is the promise, vow, or commitment to take refuge in the three jewels for a specific period or duration. Tadrigi since uh, in that case it is actually a vow, a commitment, a decisive state of mind, you've made that decision, you therefore, uh, having done so, have to uh, avoid those uh, conditions, states or actions that are contradictory to going for refuge and foster or increase those states or actions that are conducive to it, which therefore means that the vow entails uh, rules. So the decision, the vow, has to come first, and the training the maintenance of the commitments or rules comes second.
in order that the vow not be damaged or uh, impaired. However, we sometimes have the difficulty of being unable to keep the rules or commitments we have undertaken. And that problem arises from the fact that we only can arise from the fact that we only hear about these rules or commitments after having taken the vow. Whereas taking or not taking the vow is up to you as an individual, once you have taken it, you've in a sense um, engaged in a contract or contractual obligation. And therefore, the, it is by keeping the commitments or rules of the vow that you maintain the uh, splendor or majesty of the refuge vow. If you have deep, if you take the vow of refuge based on deep and sincere conviction, then you will automatically or naturally uh, keep its rules or commitments, as you will have a natural enthusiasm for avoiding that which contradicts the vow of refuge and for cultivating that which um, enhances it. But if you lack such conviction, the commitments may seem an onerous burden. As for how one goes for refuge, <coughs> the sources of refuge are the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Going for refuge means relying upon the Buddha as the teacher and demonstrator of the path. We take refuge in the Dharma as uh, the actual practice, what we practice on the path. In fact, the Dharma constitutes the path that we uh, tread, the road that we travel. <coughs> And we take refuge in the Sangha, viewing the Sangha as friends and guides on this path. Yana, the Sangha said that you do some day, but never see ya, never have the end of Jilia, then a member down, man down. To give you a different analogy, one can view 
oneself as a seriously ill person, the Buddha as a physician, the Dharma as medicine, and the Sangha as nurses. So having now given you that brief introduction, I will now confer the vow of refuge. Tadilla, during the ceremony, you will be repeating the words of going for refuge after me. Whether you will be Going for refuge, or in addition to that, taking the vow of refuge, will depend upon your intention during this repetition. If when you repeat the words of going for refuge after me, you think, I am just going for refuge, but not committing myself to the vow of refuge, then you will receive the benefit of going for refuge, but you will not uh, have to keep the rules or commitments of the refuge vow. If, on the other hand, you think, I am committing myself to going for refuge, and therefore I am taking the vow of refuge, you will receive not only the benefits of going for refuge, but the benefits of the vow, but you will also have to keep its rules or commitments. <laughs> Nam Usually, um, when I administer the vow of refuge in this way, uh, I do it in Tibetan. Sometimes if there are very few Tibetans present and I'm prepared to do so, I will give the vow in other languages, such as the native language of the people present. Today, I have not uh, prepared an English version of the vow, so the ceremony would not proceed very smoothly were I attempt to intro improvise such. So therefore, I'm going to give you the vow in Sanskrit. And this has uh, one particular advantage, which is that there are probably very, very few people here who <laughs> speak Sanskrit, which means that if I make any mistakes, you won't catch me. Because I know that, I will be more relaxed. So it's beneficial to you and to me. <laughs> so now please repeat the following words after me. We will do this three times. Buddham 
Putham Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Dharmam Dharmam Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Sangam Sangam Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Tutyampi Tutyampi Buddham Buddham Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Tutyampi Tutyampi Dharmam Dharmam Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Tutyampi Tutyampi Sangam Sangam Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Tirtyampi Tirtyampi Buddham Buddham Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Tirtyampi Tirtyampi Dharmam Dharmam Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Titiampi Titiampi Sangam Sangam Saranam Saranam Gachami Gachami Adi Tsasum Jini Jain Tati Kyamdri Domba Shuwe Kulong Yungi Tisu Tangye Tabi Yenu Shisha Kyan Tsu Lexus Kyamdri Domba Tabi Me Vazir those of you who are, wish to receive the vow of refuge, having now repeated it three times, I, when, I, when I in a moment say, that is the method, in response, please say, lexo or excellent, and through that, you will receive the vow. Tabiyeno. Lexo. Adiyeke, kyamdru, shidanta kyamdru teleyan, jikarshwe, so the Tatanjin Chik, Lebju Chevim, Tatak and Dalji, Namjin Kyam to the Chizi Soy part summer. That in the Ji gives to her Ji. The Susatabe Nego Chizi Soy about Gives to her on the Ore, Ginig. Kyam to Josun Zimbig, Ginig Domba Shue College, Chizi Soy about the Chess Yore. The machine did Chizi Soy about Sade, that Domba tea. Red One thing I forgot to mention is that, as I said earlier, there is, there must be a definite duration of the vow in mind when you take it. For it to be a vow, you have to think, I am going to take refuge until such and such time. Usually, people, when they take the vow of refuge for the first time, take it for the duration of this life. And the reason for that is that the duration of this life, the remaining duration of this life, is the longest period for which you can take a pratimoksha or individual liberation vow. So when the vow of refuge is administered in the format of the um, preliminary ordination of an upasaka or lay disciple who holds the three refuges, then it can only be given uh, for the duration of this life according to the common vehicle. However, when it is given in the context of the Mahayana, one takes the vow of refuge uh, until one achieves Buddhahood, so not only uh, for this life. And now I'll tell you the rules. the rule did. Miss 
다가는 대단 개화를 쳐도나, 응, 대래 유해, 응, 개화 쳐도나, 대래 유해 텁치 아지라, 야, 대래, 지, 튜밤, 응, 대래 야지, 가수에, 에, 대 야기에 드라기, 에, 차, 에, 야기에 드라기에다, 에, 겐으로 쳐여 위네, 아, 대 가수, 디, 디 컨듭 지도 가수에, 댄 아다, 루비아, 네, 저 I mean, the real rule here, first of all, these are not my rules. The real rule here is your commitment to taking refuge if you have taken the vow. So the idea of the trainings or commitments are how to keep that rule by avoiding all that is contradictory to that commitment. Because contradictions of any commitment will automatically weaken that commitment. And how to reinforce it positively. Because reinforcement of a commitment will obviously increase that commitment. In a sense, um, these trainings or commitments are the answer to the question, having taken refuge and having committed myself in my mind to continuing to take refuge, how can I keep this commitment protected from impairment? How can I keep it unimpaired and how can I cause this commitment to deepen or increase? There are many uh, aspects of this training or these commitments. One could divide them into a what must be avoided, that is, all those things that are contradictory to going for refuge, and what needs to be cultivated or uh, practiced, that is, all that uh, facilitates or increases or strengthens the vow of refuge. <laughs> Re Tatti in any case, in general, they're divided into restrictions and observances. But there are two ways that these can be categorized or subdivided. One is called the Shastra tradition because it's based on the Shastras on this matter composed by the eminent scholars of Buddhist India. And the other is called the Upadesha or uh, special instruction tradition because it is based upon the oral instructions of Lord Atisha's Kadampa tradition who uh, emphasize the vow of refuge not only as a vow you take but as the essence of your ensuing practice. 
So most commonly in Tibetan Buddhism, the explanations of the commitments of the vow of refuge are given following the Upadesha tradition of Lord Atisha and the Kadampas. And that is the tradition I will follow today in my explanation. No, not being just that. God will love this that. I don't know. You did some of you, you can't imagine the she and the other. She sang it, Joseph, and she never had a Joseph Mendro. And she had a son, Joseph, and a similar and it's a Mijay. And again, you need Joseph, and Tibet, all the Mendro of Saturday. The first category uh, in this explanation of the commitments are the restrictions. The restrictions or avoidances are things you should not do after having taken refuge. These correspond to the three sources of refuge. The first is, having gone to the Buddha for refuge or having taken refuge in the Buddha, do not seek refuge from mundane gods or spirits. The second is, having taken refuge in the Dharma, do not engage in anything that is harmful uh, to other beings. And the third is, having taken refuge in the Sangha, Avoid the company and especially influence of evil companions. Daddy, <laughs> There are many other uh, commitments associated with the vow of refuge, but I usually emphasize these three, the three restrictions. And the reason is that these restrictions protect us from all that is adverse to or contradictory to our vow of refuge. And since there are far more adverse conditions than there are conducive conditions to going for refuge, I emphasize in my explanation of the commitments those restrictions that protect us from those many adverse conditions. That <laughs> The first of these, as I said, is having taken refuge in the Buddha, do not seek refuge from uh, mundane gods. And this means not engage in the worship of mundane gods. And there are many issues that ensue from this commitment, such as the question of whether there is or is not some kind of creator god or deity. And there are many other implications as well. But let's leave those uh, troublesome side issues alone. I want to talk about the essential meaning of this uh, restriction or rule. I think that um, Buddhists and in particular Vajrayana practitioners 
uh, can be in some danger of violating this restriction. I see this because, among other things, nowadays many practitioners of Vajrayana emphasize uh, customs and ritual. Meditation room Family members the worst thing is, it won't be funny when I say it. <laughs> One thing is that Dharma practice cannot be something that we do alone, only in our meditation room or in the shrine room. We have to bring it out of the shrine room and meditation room into all of our daily life. But some people uh, think that a ritual practice alone is enough. And they get so into ritual that they collect all sorts of grisly um, items, <laughs> such as skulls and skull malas and things like that. And they actually frighten their families, <laughs> who will say things like, he went to Tibet and he came. <laughs> came back with all these horrible things. Horrible things. Yes. Horrible object. Horrible objects. <laughs> oh, sorry. We should call emergency or something. Okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Tangent now, where I think that this becomes an overt contradiction to the vow of refuge is when someone has the idea of a Yidam deity as an external god of some kind to whom they make offerings. By making offerings to them, they please them, and in return, the Yidam, the god, is supposed to give them whatever they want. And give them whatever they want, no matter what they do or how they behave. And people who have that type of attitude will think, it doesn't matter what I do, I can do anything I want to do, whether it's good or bad, the Yidam will fix it and give me whatever I want. That type of attitude is in contradiction to the vow of refuge. That's 
The problem here is that you are relating to a yidam deity as you would relate to a mundane god, which is unfitting. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not commenting on the nature of mundane gods themselves. I'm not saying they're good or bad. What I'm commenting on here is that we relate to wisdom deities as though they were mundane gods, and that is a mistake. ยืดเสียดีอินจีดีเบลล่ากวนยืดเฉดีเยอะดูจีขั้วลูกยืดเดียวยืดดูจีเรื่องนั้นจีดีเบลล่าเดียกับวิจุชงนะเทนี่อา
which requires change and development. This is therefore much harder than merely worshiping a, a mundane God that might give you what you want. Only by being willing to change, being willing to improve ourselves, can we take refuge, become sources of refuge, and eventually protect others. So, I'm not going to be able to do this. So, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. We find in um, many Buddhists, in many Buddhist countries who regard taking refuge in the Buddha as an act of worship worshiping the Buddha. And this, it's not easy to change this because this, is, this externalization of the Buddha as an external object of worship is based fundamentally on a lack of confidence, a lack of courage. Well, <laughs> Therefore, I think that the Buddha's uh, instruction, having taken refuge in the Buddha, do not take refuge in mundane gods, was not pointing at other gods or deities we might choose to worship. The Buddha was pointing at himself and saying, don't make a mundane god out of me. When you take refuge in me, don't do so in that way. <laughs> The second restriction is having taken refuge in the Tanma, don't harm other beings. The message of that is very, very clear, but it's not easy to uh, fulfill. The problem we face in attempting to fulfill this is that not harming beings means more than simply stop stopping actively uh, harming them directly. If you were to ask someone, do you hurt other beings? Most people would say no, because they are uh, appraising hurt as open or obvious acts of direct harm. And because they think I've never killed anything and I don't beat humans or animals, I therefore am not hurting beings. Okay. 
Semne dene, semge ledizu, yigi ledizu, yana ngur, ngur zwa che tu yama. But in a sense, what harms other beings is more than that. We can harm beings with uh, two gates or faculties, our bodies and our speech. We cannot directly harm beings with our mind alone. However, even though our minds cannot directly harm others, we certainly harm ourselves with our minds. And further, the harm that we bring other beings through our bodies and speech is always inspired by a state of mind, such as malice or greed. Kashwari and also, the uh, grave danger that I mentioned this morning, our lack of love, our apathy, uh, is in a sense harmful to other beings because it places beings uh, in a danger of disaster. Nizimber Well, apathy, a lack of compassion, does not in and of itself directly harm a being in the sense of actually beating them or hurting them physically. It, it harms them uh, indirectly and much more. So we need to uh, widen and deepen our idea about what avoiding harming others really entails. And this is why we need, in order to avoid or abstain from harming others, to develop love and compassion. Tatere, the way to what I'm in draws that, right? The way to what I'm in draws that. Having taken refuge in the Sangha, we are taught to avoid the company of uh, evil companions. Tadi, call me, say, the way to what I'm in draws that, you call that, which that's a casual. Spider-Man I don't really have too much to say about avoiding evil companions, except that we need to question whether evil companions are always outside ourselves. 
Sometimes our evil companions are a part of us. For example, uh, there's a, a Spider-Man, there are two. One of them is red, and then there's another one that has a black costume and that's bad. And um, so, just as there's two uh, Spider-Men, uh, there are sort of two Spider-Men inside Inner Spider-Man. Inner Spider-Man. <laughs> two inner Spider-Men. We have Always two. fighting each other. Then some some Suzuki, Susurani, that Gavegi, Lot, the Zugi, Jelia, Chimbina, and Susu Carbon Channel. That the name Miguel or Chimbina, the Nabuchan. They did you the dinner? Susurani, that the Casu Dendin is never to start. They did you the dinner? They had the jiggy. Susugi, Trosa, they are Susugi, Sanganan, you beg you. When we have a good attitude, good intentions, and good thoughts, we become like the good Spider-Man. And when we have a negative intentions, negative motivation, we become like the evil uh, Spider-Man. So I think, in a sense, it's more important that we uh, uh, take control and, ob and observe our own thoughts than it is to worry so much about who our external companions are. Then that day, the duty to see Kashwada, Kamdu, the Labser, the duty shoots our kids at two scenes. So that was a brief explanation of the commitments of the refuge vow. That day, Jelia, that's the dunk, the Tuzudi. That is it, that two are the two work as his lamb in the document of something to own, then some shall to see. Train you stand at that till ya two are two are carriage of that number or two are she lamb in the moment. Next, um, some questions have been uh, brought to us, so uh, I will um, try to answer four. Uh, of these. The Dambo de the Rangla Yichepa Gogido Sonso. So so Rangla Yichepa the Yongyaki Juche and Kandra Gogido. You want me to say it in English? Tadiji Galahor's been there. Tatima Imadwe. Dima Imamoto. Rangla Yichepa Juje. Nipa de Matsoke, Don Donna, Ning de Lepa the Ning, La Drava, Zotso Kandra Gogdo. Then Matsoke, Samo Toyat Sanda, Hakoa Sanda, the Ning, the Sonange, the Deniki, the Pension Magawak, the Drava Champosaya Kandra Gogdo. The Jinya Hakoshime. Next. So we, the third question made it. Um, <laughs> Which is more important if you have limited time? One, spending many hours in personal practice, or two, spending most of your time actively helping others? Yamnesia, <laughs> 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 